us, you know, seriously. This is 32-year-old Jeff Hall. These pictures were taken just hours before he was executed right in this room. The executioner, this child, his son, his 10-year-old son. But if you find this image disturbing, consider this one taken two weeks earlier. A neo-Nazi rally on the streets of Trenton, New Jersey. Who streets? Who streets? Who streets? Sing home! Jeff Hall was a rising star in the largest neo-Nazi group in the country, the National Socialist Movement, or NSM. You know where to find me. The numbers nationwide are still small, 500 members tops, but they're growing. This isn't dress up. This isn't a game. We're fighting for our children's future. According to Jeff Hall and the NSM, that future would be an all-white, non-Semitic America. There's other groups I could join. There's tons of them. Jeff Hall joined only three years ago. <laughs> but seen as personable and charismatic, he quickly became the leader of the NSM in California, Arizona, Utah, and Nevada. He -ho! He -ho! He -ho! This footage was shot by Julie Plattner, a filmmaker and photographer who was able to gain the NSM's trust. How you doing, Miss Julie? and enter their closed world of private meetings. Julie has me, Mike. She quickly honed in on Jeff Hall. Jeff, yeah. nice to meet you. Jeff Hall cultivated a sense of family among his new recruits. Yeah, we did good. Holding his monthly meetings at his house with the kids around, including his son, Joseph. These gatherings were a strange mix of Nazi propaganda. And that's how we apply what we learned from Mein Kampf and party games. I got all the right answers, guys. Happy birthday! A birthday celebration topped off by... Jeff's mother, Joanne Patterson, went to some of her son's meetings, despite abhorring her son's politics. I wanted to make sure it was okay for my grandkids to be there, and I had a great time. It looked like any barbecue in any backyard in America. The but they were Nazis. <laughs> well, they... We're just sitting here talking about Nazis. I know, it's crazy. They're in your own family. I know, it's crazy, huh? My son became a Nazi. Yeah, a Nazi leader. <laughs> we start at 12. On Saturday, April 30th, her son Jeff held what would be his last get-together. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary, to the extent this is ordinary. Ten-year-old Joseph was running in and out of the house. Come outside, man. All the kids were. Okay, come here. Dad even took some of them to see his Nazi glow-in-the-dark t-shirt with its SS insignia. It's a little things in life. This is the last recorded image of Jeff Hall alive. After people left that night, the family watched a movie, Yogi Bear, as Jeff slept on the couch. The others went upstairs to bed. Then, at 4.02 a.m., 911 emergency. My son shot my husband. I need an ambulance. He's bleeding. <laughs> How old is your son? Oh, How old is your son? Oh, my God. You were the first detective at the scene after the murder. Is that correct? That's correct. Tell detective so Greg Rowe saw Jeff Hall dead on the couch. He says little Joseph, who was found hiding upstairs under his covers, described calmly how he had gotten the family's Rossi 357 Magnum from his dad's closet. Went downstairs and shot his dad. Um, he described how he used his four fingers to cock the gun and used two fingers to uh, pull the trigger, and he pointed it at his ear. This was not a case of a kid thinking it was a toy and letting it go off by accident. There's no evidence that this was anything but intentional. Prosecutor Michael Socchio. When he was taken into juvenile hall, he was so little, they didn't have shoes to fit him. So they had to go out and buy him a little pair of tennis shoes. He asked if he'd be able to keep the shoes when he left, <gasps> which showed an absolute lack of understanding of what was going to be happening. The Department of Justice reports only nine cases of a 10-year-old killing a parent since 1980. But then, how many American kids are raised by a Nazi? When you heard that the victim was the head of the local Nazi organization, did you just think to yourself, that that had something to do with it. When, it. when I first heard it, I thought, there's got to be some connection with uh, Nazi views, with uh, 
uh, guns, with weapons, with violence. Hate speech. Uh, hate speech. Yeah. Sure. That was just about everyone's assumption. So we set out to discover why Jeff Hall became a Nazi three years ago. I think the biggest factor that contributed was the economy. When the housing market just fell apart in California, he had no work. He hadn't worked for three years. He was in construction. He was in construction. And that side of the economy just completely dried up. Completely dried up. And he tried and tried and tried to get work. And it's just scary. Poverty is a really scary thing. Jeff lived in the Inland Empire, a vast stretch of California desert east of L.A. It was among the worst hit when the real estate market crashed, ranking fifth in foreclosures nationwide. Entire communities became ghost towns. Unemployment reached 15 percent. Jeff was poor and angry with time on his hands when he came upon Jeff Scoop, commander of the National Socialist Movement. You have illegal aliens coming over the border, streaming over in hordes, taking American jobs. Neo-Nazis focused their tirades lately on immigrants and the so-called browning of America, where places like California no longer have a white majority. We're a white civil rights organization. What does that mean? Basically, um, what Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton do for the black people is what we do for white people. Well, not exactly. I read to Commander Jeff Scoop this from the NSM's website. All non-whites should leave this nation, peacefully or by force. Our ideal America would be an America that's all white. That doesn't yeah, mean... Yeah, and everybody else has to leave, peacefully or by force. Wow. Well, our goal is, is a white homeland. I mean, the president's not white. Our attorney general's not white. So they should leave. What about Jews? They're also a race of people. So they should leave. Correct. He knows that won't happen anytime soon, but he's preparing. Ten white supremacists of various groups were on the ballot in 2010, including three for Congress. One candidate seeking local office was Jeff Hall. Jeff Hall ran for elections in California and took in almost 30% of the vote as an open national socialist. It was a good run. It was a great run. Beside that unsuccessful run for local water board, Jeff organized patrols at the Mexican border just a short drive from his home. They would show up fully armed with night vision equipment and round up migrants as they crossed into the U.S. Two weeks before his death, Jeff bragged about taking his young son with him on patrol. My son was able to uh, operate a Gen 1 night vision in the infrared scope. At the age of nine, my son's out at the border. So was being exposed to all that hate and talk of violence the reason Joseph murdered his dad? You guys get your glocks cocked and be ready to rock or go on the border. That's how we do it. The more we looked, the more we realized it wasn't that cut and dried. There might have been some things that we didn't know about Jeff mm -hmm. um, that we didn't we wouldn't have liked. Megan Hall, Jeff's sister, says she hated her brother's politics, but had always seen him as a model father. He was an amazing father and would do anything for his kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my, my nephew would just look at him like he was his hero. But in the last couple of years, the hero changed, darkened, whether it was the power of being a Nazi leader or the powerlessness of being unemployed. He drank more, she says, and was prone to striking out at his son and his wife, Krista. My brother had, had shown a different side to him. Not all of the time. It was on random occasions, not predictable. He was beating up both Joe and Krista, is what we heard. Is that what you've been told? Yeah. Young Joseph told police that he decided to kill his dad to, quote, end the son versus father thing. Did he describe what the abuse entailed? He described his, his father hitting him, kicking him, um, pushing him. He found himself in a situation, or believed he was in a situation, that required some type of desperate act. What's unusual about Joseph Hall is that his solution to it was to kill. Most children don't think about what I'll need to do here is kill my father. 
As the police began to dig, they discovered that little Joseph was a volatile and violent child who had been kicked out of several schools for attacking students and staff, once nearly choking a teacher with a phone cord. My grandson was who he was from the time he was born. What do you mean? He has absolutely no understanding of cause and effect. It is so rare that a 10-year-old would kill a father. Well, but you know, I wasn't surprised by it. I just somehow felt it could always happen, but I thought it would be when he was older. Would this have happened if Jeff had not become a Nazi? I think so. Probably later. Joe was still Joe, and they weren't having a lot of luck figuring out exactly what his problems were or how to deal successfully with them. Little Joseph also had a history of starting fires. Does he raise the question of whether a killer is, can be pre-programmed? I think he had everything physically in place that it didn't take much to bring him right along to uh, thinking that murder is appropriate. So he was born the match, and that environment in that home lit the match. Is that a, a I fair way to a, say it? I think it's a very fair way to say it. Jeff's mother got custody of his four little girls because his wife pled guilty to leaving a loaded gun in the house. And every week, Joanne visits her son's young killer in juvenile hall. It's a struggle every minute of my life because my son was murdered and I want justice for him. But only at the ex that only happens at the expense of my grandson. What about politics with these children? I mean, what, do you feel any obligation to teach them about Nazis? They're being raised conservative Republican. <laughs> Not we need Nazis. more of those in California. <laughs> but what about Nazism? It's gone for this family. Joseph awaits trial, incarcerated at the county's juvenile hall, where he celebrated his 11th birthday. Whatever his sentence, he will likely be released by the age of 25.